So before the video starts, I just want to tell you that uh, stay till the end because there's some good news for you guys. And uh, also I would like to thank my friend at Vilified Hip Hop for providing me the music in this video. Go check out his channel, I'll link it in the description below. And also follow his Instagram account at Vilified Hip Hop. And uh, now, on to the video. Okay, hello there. So I got to inform you, I'm going to review this film in two ways, non-spoiler and spoiler review. This is because a person who hasn't watched the movie might want to watch it after the non-spoiler review. So first, the non-spoiler review. This film is great, another amazing film from Quentin Tarantino. Yes, Tarantino. This film takes place in 1858 where Django, a black slave, meets a German bounty hunter and becomes a cowboy and has to rescue his slave wife from the clutches of evil and racist plantation owners. And the genre is a spaghetti western action. Interested? Well, the performances are great as everyone blends into their roles. The film is also incredibly violent as, come on, it's a Tarantino movie. And it's also incredibly fun and entertaining as the action is just fantastic and the humor is very sharp along with the dialogues. Now there are going to be spoilers in this video, so I'm warning you from here on. I love Christoph Waltz as Dr. King Schultz. His performance is charismatic and feels intimidating, although he's really smart and sharp as he commands the screen and your attention. Jamie Foxx was perfect for the character of Django as he was a silent character, but as the film progresses, he comes into his own and portrays his toughness perfectly. Samuel L. Jackson brilliantly plays Stephen. Stephen hates Django, probably because Stephen worked tirelessly to reach where he is, whereas Django just got freed out of nowhere, which makes him incredibly jealous of Django. Kerry Washington plays Django's slave wife, Broomhilda, and does so beautifully as she perfectly portrays her insecurities and vulnerabilities. Her character has been through a lot, I mean, a whole lot of bad stuff, and you feel that through her performance. Now, Django is a black slave and is rescued by bounty hunter Dr. King Schultz, who, as he says, despises slavery but also needs Django's help as he has seen the faces of three brittle brothers who have bounties on their heads. Now, this could have been simple, right? They find the three brothers, Schultz could have killed them, as I said, simple. But the masterful Tarantino does something a little different. He adds a personal connection between the brothers and Django, which is genius in my opinion. Through a flashback, we see that those brothers mercilessly whipped Broomhilda, Django's wife, which does three things. One, this shows the cruel nature of the three brothers. Two, shows how powerless Django is at this moment. Three, gives Django a reason to absolutely hate and despise these people. And so when Django kills two brothers, we feel justified. As Django was pleading John Brittle when his wife was getting whipped, I like the way you beg, boy. And when Django finally kills John, he says, I like the way you die, boy, which makes us feel satisfied. Then Schultz kills the third brother. Django and Schultz get what they wanted, so now what? They have another personal goal to achieve, which goes on throughout the movie, to rescue Broomhilda. But before that, we see a pretty cool montage of Django training and improving on his skills as a talented gunman. Then we both later figure out that Broomhilda is under the clutches of the most evil character in this film. And one of, if not the best performance in this whole film is Calvin Candy, played by the ever so fantastic Leonardo freaking DiCaprio. Yes. Also, I love his character's reveal as it uses the classic Tarantino zoom. Why is he evil? He's energetic, egotistic, and a narcissistic man. Why though? Well, as two slave fighters fight to the death, to survive, Calvin enjoys this wholeheartedly. We see Django and Shull slowly infiltrate Candy as we see his ruthless and evil nature for he lets a black man get eaten by dogs. Evil enough yet? Eventually, Broomhilda is freed as Candy frees her and as our main character prepare to leave, Candy wants Schultz to shake his hand and so... If you insist. Yeah, and what takes place is some awesome pure western and bloody action as Django, one man, takes down the whole of Candy's men. Well, until he runs out of bullets. This up and down that occurs during the action gets us engaged. Django is seeking ass, then is forced to hide, then shoots some more people, but then runs out of bullets. 
After getting captured and humiliated, he is sent with a bunch of Australians to be sold off somewhere else, and he uses his wit, which shows his progression as a character, to outsmart the Australian. Fun fact, the director of this film, Quentin Tarantino, played one of the Australians who Django blows up in this film. Then Django saves his wife as he basically gets the girl, from which we feel tremendously satisfied, like an old western, and then Django finally pays back blood for blood, and we, or at least I, felt justified. As Django then blows the house up, it's a literal metaphor for destroying the little part that treated slaves like animals. The end. I like that Django isn't trying to end slavery, but just trying to rescue his wife from these monsters. Now people criticize this film for over-utilizing the n-word, but come on, if it wasn't used as much, then people would consider it incorrect according to history. So yeah, this film is fantastic, yet also shockingly funny and fascinatingly entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. Wait, don't click away from the video yet. I've got news for you. So I had done a review for Monsters University as it was episode 1 for my new series The Gems of Pixar where I review every Pixar film and few of my subscribers told me that they really liked it and after 9 videos stay tuned because the next video is episode 2 where I review Pixar's Onward. Like, share and subscribe and until next time I'll see you later.